Hello, my name is Marilyn Gardner. Today I'm going to demonstrate a straightforward technique for creating Jen's pin chain. I've brought four samples of Jen's pinned with me so that you can see the contrast between a light gauge of wire and a heavy gauge of wire. This sample is 20 gauge, 18 gauge, 16 gauge, and 14 gauge. I'm going to be demonstrating with the heavy one so that it's more easily visible. My preference for pliers for chain mail is flat nose pliers. And uh, I've brought some Tronex flat nose pliers and some Zuron flat nose pliers, these two. If I'm using a really light gauge of wire, I, that's, the Zuron ones are my preference. Uh, the middle gauge wire, I like the middle weight of Tronex, and for heavy gauge wire, I like the heavier flat nose pliers from Tronex. And these are the ones I'm going to be using today with the 16 gauge jump rings. I want you to look closely at the 16 gauge bracelet and along follow one row of rings down the length. And what you'll see is this row, you're going from this step up to this step, up to this step, up to this step. And if you just turn it a slight little bit, you'll see the next row of rings, you're stepping down, stepping down, stepping down, stepping down. Turn it one more little bit, and you're back to stepping up, stepping up, stepping up. And each one, each successive ring is one step above. And you can keep turning it, and you're going to see one row is stepping up, and the next row is stepping down. The next thing you can do is turn the chain so that you can see these chevrons. So you can see that one's pointing down. These two rings make a, a chevron that's pointing downwards. And the, that chevron is the same all the way up the chain. I'm going to start the demonstration by adding some rings to the existing sample that you saw earlier. And I'm going to use my heaviest Tronix pliers and I've got some open jump rings. Okay, so I'm ready to add this ring to the end and I can choose either end. That's the nice thing about Jen's pin. You can work from either end. And this ring is going to go through the last two jump rings at the end. So you've got a 50-50 chance of choosing correctly when you put the first jump ring in. And I'm going to put it just from this side, and I'm just guessing. And I'm going to look over here, and guess what? I, I guessed correctly. Because if you look at this jump ring and this jump ring, do you see how we're stepping up, stepping up, and stepping up? So I can close that jump ring and I know that it's going to be uh, correct. Now, I'm going to set my left hand pliers down and I'm going to lay this on my, with, I'm still holding this in the pliers, I'm gonna set it on my index finger and I'm gonna hold it with my thumb. I'm gonna pick up the next ring and I can adjust it a little bit and I'm going to go through the last two jump rings and I'm using this thumb to hold open the space between those two because there's where it's going to go. Going to go on the right hand side of that third ring and I'm just going through that hole so that I catch the end two jump rings and then I close it. Set my pliers down lay this on my index finger and hold it with my thumb. Pick up the next jump ring and kind of get it ready to insert. Use my thumb to spread apart those two jump rings and there's the hole. And I'm going through the last two jump rings. And I'm going to check, yep, there's the stair steps. Stepping up, stepping up, stepping up. And close the jump ring, set my pliers down, lay it on my finger, pick up the next ring, use my thumb 
to separate those two and insert through the last two jump rings. Close it. Set the pliers down, lay it on my finger, and put in the next jump ring. Pick up my pliers and close it. And again, lay it on here, separate, pick up the next jump ring, put it right in between those two. And I really don't even have to um, check each time that I've got it correct because I know it's going to be right. But let's do a check anyway, and you can see that 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 row is all stepping up. Stepping up, stepping up, stepping up. And just continue adding the jump rings. Next step is to start from square one. So I'm going to close a ring. And I have some open rings here. I'm going to be making a three ring Mobius. So I start with putting one ring into one ring, close it, and I have the first two rings. Now I'm going to turn this ring to my right and slide this jump ring down in front of the first one. Pick up my third ring of the Mobius Put it through both of those, close it, and again swing these to the right, and this one comes down in front of the three jump rings. I now have my three ring Mobius. I'm going to pick up another ring. And I'm going to have to use my thumb to maneuver these three. The, th the bottom ring I'm pushing over, and I'm going to get right in this hole right here through those last two jump rings. And I get got the first one out of the way over to the left. And then I'm just going to close it. Now we're going back to what I showed you earlier. I'm going to set this on my index finger, use my thumb to separate rings two and three, pick up a new jump ring, and insert it in that hole through the last two jump rings into that hole and close it. Set down my pliers, put it on my index finger, pick up the next ring, keep using my thumb to get that third ring out of the way to the left, and this one hooks right into those last two rings, and I close it. Set it on my index finger. Use my thumb to separate rings two and three. There we go. Whoops. And there's the hole through the last two rings. Lay it on my finger. Pick up the next two next jump ring. Use my thumb to separate those two, and I just go through the last two jump rings and close it. Now, instead of setting down my pliers, I can put my index finger through the um, pliers like so, and I can work this way. And I'm going to pick up the next ring 
and into the hole. And I've got my pliers handy. I don't actually have to set them down. On my finger, pick up a ring. And right through there. Now, let's have a quick check and see what the, aha, there's the pattern. See the steps going upwards. And if I turn it a little bit, there's the steps going downwards. I'm going to just put a couple more rings in. There's where it goes. Close it. And one more. And close it. Here are some samples of some finished Jens pinned jewelry. And we'll start at this end with the, the heavier ga uh, gauge jump rings. These are 14 gauge copper and a silver bracelet and then the 16 gauge two necklaces with some beaded, uh, a beaded centerpiece. Then an 18 gauge chain with the Byzantine circle pendant and this happens to be one of the projects in the uh, upcoming book. And two in the 20 gauge, a black one with a beaded pendant and a copper one with a bicycle chain pendant. Thank you for joining us. Visit facetjewelry.com to learn more chainmail techniques and see other jewelry making tutorials.